Today on Gigabytes Tech. Hey. That's weird. Today on Gigabytes Tech. Hey. Hey. I'm going to show you how to make no. a. What about me? No. What about me? What about me? You did it to the other ones. Apparently, we're doing another mini video. What about me? No. I'm Mr. Gigabytes, and this is Gigabytes Technology. Okay, so for this mini mod, I've decided to try and put as much as I can to the mini that I put into the full-size C64. Now, some of you might see some of this as familiar, but for those who aren't sure what they're looking at, I'm gonna go over it real quick. Now, what we've got here is the, the main circuit board for the C64 mini. The LED is plugged in to here, into this port. We have our USB mod so that we can add more ports to the C64. The cable goes around and out the side to here. Now, what I did eliminate was the right angle adapter for that particular mod because we are, we needed room for the other things that I'm going to put in there. The other thing I got rid of was one of the weights. Now we're putting in additional weight, so removing one of the weights really isn't that big of a deal. The USB adapter is here. I did cut a little notch out of the standoff so that it, so that the USB isn't kind of crooked. So this is the butt converter for the uh, internal power supply for the 9 volt power supply. We have the charging cable coming in from the side going into the battery and then the battery out to the switch and into the butt converter and then out again through the side using this short USB pigtail. Now the this butt converter is pretty much the same thing as as this butt converter that we used in the larger unit. The only difference is, the primary difference here is that we are actually going to need to calibrate the voltage on this on this converter. The other thing is, is it does require a little bit of soldering in order to connect all the wires together. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and hook this up. Now this box here is a simple multimeter that I put together and what it does is this measures the voltage, this measures current, this switch uh, powers up this display here. The display for the voltage is actually powered by the voltage flowing through the circuit. So what I need to do is I actually need to turn the power supply on and then we'll calibrate the voltage using a a small screwdriver or even my thumbnail there. So let's flip that on. This is the switch here. So we've got 7.5 volts. Now I just need to adjust this until we get about 5.1. Here we go. It's starting to drop. Took quite a few turns on that. To slow down. I want to get it to about 5.1 is about ideal. Right there. And we'll just leave it right there. Now that we've got the butt converter calibrated, we can set that aside. Initially, I was going to build an external power supply, so I did. One USB port. We've got a butt converter just like the one here. This has been calibrated for 5.1 volts. And if we plug this in and switch it on, we get 5.1 volts. But where I was just going to use 
an external power supply like this and power it, but I went, nah. We've got enough room in there for a 9 volt battery and the buck converter, and we can find a way to route these cables. To get the computer inside, what I did is we're using a Raspberry Pi 0W. This will also work with a Raspberry Pi 0 2W. A Raspberry Pi 0 2W has the same processing power as the Raspberry Pi 3 we have in the larger system. So you can get the same amount of processing power into the Mini that you can here. Now one note, this does not fit where this is until you cut the side of the case out. And I'll show you that once we have everything put together. What I did here is I placed the nuts here and I drilled through the nut to the bottom of the case for the screw would have enough clearance to poke out just a little bit through the bottom of the case. So this just mounts in here like that and it's removable. These standoffs are 730 seconds and I use posts instead of screws. You can certainly use screws but I have an abundance of these seven millimeter posts, so that's what I'm gonna use. I chose not to put the pin header on the Raspberry Pi Zero simply because I didn't need it. So let's talk about the battery placement. When you fold this all up, the battery actually fits right about here. And let's go ahead and actually close this up. Now with the battery the way it is, this essentially has to go straight down for the most part. And there we go. Before I put the screws in the bottom, I figure we might want to give it a test. The first thing we've got to do is test all of the functions that we put into this. Now we want to make sure that the, the mini is still functioning like it's supposed to. So that's what we're going to test first. We'll just do a quick boot up. And while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and test the power supply as well. So plug all those cables in, flip the switch. And that is looking good. We have joystick support. We have USB. So that's looking great. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shut it down. I'm gonna turn the power supply off, unplug it. Now we need a couple of adapters for the Pi. And we have a uh, USB adapter, go from a mini to a full size. So this is just an on-the-go adapter. That goes in the middle port. We need an HDMI adapter to go from a mini HDMI to a full size. Let's get rid of the joystick here. We won't need that. Well, what we will need is a keyboard and a mouse. So there's a keyboard and a mouse. And this of course is the Villaross keyboard and mouse combo that can also house your Raspberry Pi, but this will do nicely for our purposes for the moment. Plug in the power. Let's go ahead and flip that on. And we've got a booting Pi. We have a mouse. And we have a desktop. Now, one of the parlor tricks that this will be able to do, we take this, let's go ahead and plug it into our, our USB hub here. Take our USB hub, plug it into the Pi, we should still have, there's our mouse, and it sees our SanDisk. It sees our SanDisk cruiser that's inside the C64, so we can use the USB hub that's built into the Mini and the storage that's built in to use with the Raspberry Pi. Everything seems to be working on the Mini that should be working. And I'll be back in a moment to wrap the video up. Okay, so let me give you an up-close look at the modifications we did. Now, this is the USB hub we did in an earlier video. 
This is the switch for the internal power supply. Right now it's in the off position. We have the Raspberry Pi Zero W. We have the power output. We have the charge port. And on this side we really didn't do anything at all. I removed the right angle adapter from one of the other videos that that we did uh, simply because there really wasn't any more room in this in this mini to accommodate that right angle adapter but I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out what really gave me the idea to do this as well was when I was filming the uh, maxing out the maxi video I ran into some problems and had to use this as sort of a thumb drive so I I pulled this out and unplugged this and hooked it up to the maxi and I was looking for a specific game that wasn't loaded on the, the maxi so on the uh, full-size C64 I was looking for a game that wasn't on the full-size C64 and it turned out I just needed to update the firmware it also wasn't on my thumb drive either so so that it didn't work anyway but I figured what well, if we can make this more useful, put a computer in here, put uh, and then we can run Vice, allow the Pi to use the USB hub and the extra storage. That would be advantageous because the Pi Zero, because the Pi Zero only has one USB port. So that was a that was a big advantage. And then adding in the rechargeable power supply into it will also allow it to power other projects, power itself, and just generally be more useful. But that's it for the moment, and we'll see you in the next one.